God bless you. Thank you for being with us today. We are Abundant Grace Church. I am Bishop Ramon Di Maria, and I'm the senior pastor of the church. We just praise God for the opportunity to minister. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, we praise you and thank you for the opportunity to allow us to represent you here today. We pray that as your word goes forth, people will be edified and people will be touched and convicted and turn their life over to your son, Jesus Christ, that their soul may be saved and they will go to heaven when they lead this life. Thank you, Father, for your blessings today. In Jesus' name, we praise you and thank you. Amen. My beloved, today we will go with part two of our message series, Don't Allow Riches to Etc., Etc., which means to draw you away from God. Don't allow riches to be a temporary satisfaction in your life to wear. You don't seek those things that are eternal. Our main scripture is from the Gospel of Matthew chapter 19 and verse 16, which reads as follows from the King James Version. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And the Bible in basic English renders it. And one came to him and said, Master, what good thing have I to do so that I may have eternal eternal life. So here we see a rich young man approaching Jesus and asking him a very important question. And that question dealt with his future destiny. And this is a question that we must all ask and answer truthfully in ourselves. That is, where are you going to spend eternity? In your present state, the present state of your soul, where will you spend eternity when you leave this life? It'll either be in heaven or the lake of fire which is most oftenly called hell. Today, I will open up with Matthew chapter 19 and verse 20, which reads, firstly, from the King James Version, The young man saith unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth up. What lack I yet? Now, the God's Word Version renders it. The young man replied, I have obeyed all these commandments. What else do I need to do? My beloved, all these things the man kept. But he did not do the most important thing, and that is repent and receive salvation. So he wanted to know what he lacked in his life to where it would prevent him from going to heaven. What did he lack? What things did he need to do to get to heaven? We see what he did already, but there are things that he must do. Heaven is not approachable only through good works. Heaven is only approachable through repentance, and receiving Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. So in essence, he was saying that he endeavored to obey these different commands. And knowing that he did all these good deeds, that he should be able to go to heaven. But he was lacking in one thing, faith in Jesus Christ. The only way you can be perfect in the eyes of God the Father is have Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. You can only be perfect through being covered in the shed blood of Jesus Christ. There is no other way to be perfect in the eyes of God. Now Matthew chapter 19 and verse 21 says, Jesus saith unto him, If that will be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. If you want to be perfect, you must be able to deny the flesh, first of all. Deny the the rudiments of this world. You cannot have ties to this world and expect to go to heaven because where your treasures are, that's where your heart is going to be. If your treasures are invested or you have invested everything that you have in the things of this life, this short term stay here in this life, whether you're 80, 90, or 100 years old, compared to eternity, it is but an instant, a blink of the eye. See, eternity cannot be measured. It is forever and ever and ever, etc. But people would rather invest in this life, this temporary life, than invest in the kingdom of God. Because they don't walk by faith, but they walk by sight. They walk by what they see, instead of by what is unseen. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Hell, well, let's put it this way, torment at this present time. Is full of people that invested in this life instead of the life to come. But paradise is full of those 
that invested in the kingdom of God. But there are fewer people in paradise than there are in torment because the majority of people are on their way to hell because they invest in this life. My beloved, where is your heart? In this world, or is your heart focused on the world to come? Jesus said, if you want to be perfect, sell what you own. The hardest thing to do is give something away that you worked for, that you labored for, because you think that that is what is going to make you happy, but it's not going to make you happy. Yes, I like to have things, yes, but I'm not tied to them. Like anyone else, I need the necessities of life, food, water, clothing, a roof over my head. I need an automobile to travel, to evangelize. I need water, liquids to drink. I need the sun to keep me healthy. I need the heat to keep me warm. I need the air condition to keep me cool. We all need these things, but these things are going to be left behind. You won't need them in heaven. The only thing you will need is the grace of God. You can only get the grace of God right here in this life. And that grace comes through Jesus Christ. See, in hell there's no hope. There's no grace. There's no merit. There's nothing but torment for eternity. But in heaven there's bliss. There's the sun all day long because Jesus Christ is the light. My beloved, don't invest in something that is temporal, but invest in something that is eternal. You see, my beloved, at this time, everyone is investing in something that is eternal. Heaven is eternal. Hell is eternal. You are investing in things that are eternal. But your place, your eternal place forever is decided on accepting Christ or rejecting Christ. And the opportunity to repent is today. For today is the day of salvation. Tomorrow is a promise to you. You may go to sleep and not wake up. You may go out and have an accident. You may have a heart attack. Who knows what is going to happen? When that happens, it is too late. When you die, it is too late to repent. My beloved, think seriously about where you are going to spend eternity. Don't allow the things of this life to keep you from heaven. It's not worth it. I gave my life to Jesus Christ. I still enjoy life. I still have a fulfilled life, a happy life, a peaceful life, peace of mind, peace of body, peace of spirit, because I know where I will spend eternity. I have seen many die in torment, tormented on their deathbed, but yet they refused to repent. I have preached in revivals. I have preached on the mission field and people just walked away. They didn't want to hear it. I pray to God that they did repent in the long run through the word of God that was preached to them, that was put in their mind and their spirit. But if not, they are damned in hell forever. So once again, where are you going to spend eternity? In heaven or the eternal lake of fire? My beloved, don't be like the rich young man. My beloved, understand this. Jesus told the rich young man to sell what he has and follow him. What he is saying is to forget the things of this life, the temporary things of this life. These things that exalt you above other people. And he refused to do it. Now, understand that we are responsible as individuals and as Christians to care for our own families, to care for ourselves. To make sure that we are clothed, that our families are clothed, that they are fed, their needs are met. This is not what Jesus is saying to go around naked. It's not what he's saying. Or not to eat, or deny yourself food and clothes. That's not what he's saying. This man had an abundance of things. And Jesus wanted him to give out of his abundance and to follow him. The ministry of Jesus took finances. It took clothing. It took food. At the same time, if you are denying yourself or your family members the necessities of life, you are denying them, my beloved. Take care of yourself, your family. And let me tell you, in the United States, we have more than enough left over to give to others. If we budget our finances, we eat properly. We have family meals at home. We share with one another. But that's not what we're teaching our family members either. We're teaching them bag 
food, bag dinners, bag everything, fast food. That's what we're teaching them. A lot of parents can't even cook. They don't know how to cook. There's nothing more pleasurable than sitting around the table with family members talking and having fellowship, saying the blessing of the food. It just isn't something that is done on Thanksgiving. It's just not something that is done on Christmas. It should be something that is done 365 days a year. We need to have fellowship with one another. This is important. But our main fellowship should be with God through Jesus Christ. And this is what Jesus is saying. Have fellowship with others. Share with others. And then come and have fellowship with me. Follow me. But he didn't want to give up his richly life to follow Jesus. And it is a pity that it is the same. When we went on a mission field to foreign countries, they were poor, very poor. But we all shared the food. We all put money in a pot. We all went to the store. We all bought food. We all ate together. They shared what they had with us. And we shared what we had with them, which was an abundance of what they had. They cared to share the little that they had with us. So just think. And the abundance that you have, you can share with others. The richest thing you can share with others is the word of God through Jesus Christ. Because there will be a day when you won't need these earthly things to survive. Because you will be in eternity in either heaven or hell. Mm -hmm. My big love, basically people, men and women and young adults, undergo great agony of mind while they are in suspense between the love of the world and the love of their souls. Every day when you wake up, you are challenged as to where you will spend eternity. You are challenged to make a decision to serve the world or to serve Christ. When you have a greater love for the world and enjoy the things of the world, like false security, that's what it is. It's false security because it can be taken from you at any time. Your investments can be taken from you at any time. My beloved, the things of this world are temporary. It is temporary gratification of the flesh, not the soul. Knowing where you will spend eternity is what you should be thinking about. That is what will give you peace. That is permanent, not the things of this world. Your false peace in the things of this world can flee in a moment. Stock market crash, jobs lost with the signing of a pen. We see that happening right now. 10,000 jobs cut in a second. People out of work. People invested in this life. Many of them are Christians. But I know they have peace because they know who shall meet their need. My beloved, God will meet the need. But those that have invested in the world and are tied to the world, to the flesh, will worry, will get sick. Some might even die because of the pressures of this life and the bills they have to pay, the mortgages they have. The cars they have. There's nothing wrong with having a mortgage or a car. But when your whole paycheck goes to that, that is something else. But when you invest in the kingdom of God, God multiplies it back to you many times. You see, the young rich man had great possessions, but he didn't have any peace. You notice? He went to Jesus because he wanted eternal life. Because he had no peace of where he would spend eternity. But yet, he wasn't willing to give something up to achieve that desired eternal destiny. He would rather have the praise and the comforts of this world than to give up these things, which he didn't have to give up everything. See, by following Jesus, he would have gained eternal life. The rich, the, the rich young man seemed to be a good person. I beloved, there's a lot of good people in this life that do good things for people, but the final destiny won't be heaven. It is only through Jesus Christ. My beloved, understand, it is a great misfortune for a person to invest totally in this life and not in a life to come. It's like stuff yourself today because you may not be able to eat tomorrow. My beloved, you need to eat every day. You need to dress every day. You need to take your medication every day. You need to have faith every day. But when you totally invest in this life, you will never have complete peace in your life. If you want peace today, Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Jesus is the one that can give you that total peace. So let me ask you a question. Are you allowing your wealth or ties to this world interfere with where you will spend eternity? If so, if your answer is yes, you can change your eternal destiny today 
by letting go of the world and putting your trust in Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. My beloved, there comes a time when a decision needs to be made as to where you will spend eternity. If you are watching this video or listening to the audio portion, you have the opportunity to choose where you desire to spend eternity. If you desire to spend eternity in heaven, well then you must repent. If you desire to spend eternity in hell, then do nothing. Just go on your merry way. Eat, drink, and be merry. Enjoy your life until the day you die. And when you die, it'll be too late. And from torment, you will be looking back, wishing you had another opportunity. Wishing you could hear this message once again. Wishing you could make a decision. My beloved, I encourage you to receive Christ as your Savior and Lord today. And if you want to do that, as a criterion, you must repent of your sins. Believe Jesus Christ is the Savior of all mankind. Accept him as your Savior. Believe that he was crucified, died, buried, rose from the dead on the third day, and is sitting at the right hand of God the Father in heaven. If you want to believe that today, I want to lead you in a model prayer. You know, you can pray and pray all you want, but you must pray from your heart and mean it. So if you want to make a decision to follow Christ and have peace of mind in this life and have total peace in every area when you leave this life, please pray this prayer. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I heard the message today, and it really touched my heart. I never made a decision to follow Jesus Christ, and I never thought about it that way. But now, it touched my spirit, and I know that if I died today, I would go to hell. So I want to repent. I don't want to allow riches to keep me from going to heaven. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Savior of all mankind, that he is the Son of God, that he was crucified, died, buried, and rose from the dead on the third day, and ascended into heaven, as now sitting at the right hand of God the Father, and that he is the only way that I can get to heaven. I repent of my sins. I'm sorry for my sins. Forgive me of my sins. Wash me and cleanse me. Cover me in the blood of Jesus Christ. That precious blood that was shed on the cross at Calvary. Cleanse me. I'm sorry for my sins. And I believe that by faith, through your word, through the message today that I have received eternal life and Jesus Christ is now my Savior and Lord. I believe it by faith, not by feelings, but I am jubilant right now because I know that it was true. And thank you for saving me today. In Jesus' name I pray and thank you for my salvation. Amen. My beloved, if you truly repented and received Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. What I would like you to do is go to a Bible preaching church, Bible preaching and teaching church. Get an audience with a pastor. Tell him what happened. Ask him to anoint you with oil, to pray with you, to pray for you. He may ask you to repent again. That's fine. Ask him to baptize you by full immersion in water in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Ask him to mentor you, to give you a Bible, to teach you about your newfound faith in Jesus Christ. Then what I would like you to do is contact me by email at abundant.grace at att.net. You might also contact us through our websites at www.abundantgracechurch.net or www.abundantgraceofmidlothian.com. Or you can Google us, Abundant Grace Church of Midlothian, or by my name, Bishop Ramon De Maria. We are on social media, you know, Facebook. Twitter, Spreaker, you can find us. Google us. Keep watching our videos. We have hundreds of videos on YouTube. Thank you for being with us today. And please, let me hear from you at abundant.grace at att.net. Our message title has been, Don't Allow Riches to Etc., Etc. Or basically, keep you from going to heaven. My beloved, please continue to keep up with us. Once again, let me hear from you. Remember that God loves you and Jesus died for you. This is part two and the closing of our message series. Hope to see you next week. God bless you and go with God.